Hi, this is Lori Johnson with Hancock Whitney Bank, and you're listening to Local Leaders, the podcast. Visit localleaderthepodcast.com for previous episodes or for information on appearing on the show. Hey, everyone. Before we get into today's episode with Spotlight Theater Players, I want to shout out our sponsor, Level Dumpsters. Now, look, it's fall and you're going to be out there in short order and you're probably going to be raking up a bunch of leaves and when you're doing that you're probably going to notice a bunch of things in your backyard that you need to get rid of that's why you need to call level dumpsters they have multiple size dumpsters including 15 20 25 even 30 yard dumpsters for all your dumping needs whether it's cleaning up that backyard after you rake up those leaves or you have a construction site and you need to clean that up level dumpsters is who you need to call And let me tell you, the great thing about all this is that if you mention Local Leaders of the Podcast, you're going to get $100 off just by mentioning Local Leaders. So give them a call at 225-310-6647 or book online at leveldumpsters.com. Level Dumpsters is a verified partner of Local Leaders the podcast. Hey everyone and welcome back to Local Leaders the podcast and look, today I have a nonprofit here that is very close to my heart personally. I have been to several of the uh, events, plays, things like that that you've had. I had a great time every time I went. And we'll talk about that a little bit, but first let me introduce these two good folks across from me. Actually, I'm going to have them introduce themselves. Yeah, Robert Reynolds. Uh here at Denham Springs, and uh, my wife and I, Charlotte, we are the founders of uh, Spotlight Theater Players. My name is Helene Wall. I've been involved with the theater now for about four or five years, and I'm the president of the Spotlight Theater Board right now. Awesome. And y'all are kind of well-known here. I would, I would almost say rock stars, Robert. <laughs> I like that. That'll work. <laughs> yeah, that'll work. And, and speaking of rock stars, before we get into all the wonderful things with uh, Spotlight Theater Players, you are a drummer. Yes. Tell me about that. Well, uh, I people ask me when did I start drumming. I uh, said I came out the womb drumming because <laughs> both of my older brothers were drummers. Uh, yeah. matter of fact, the oldest was a studio drummer in Nashville, uh, not with any major artists. He worked with independent studios. Okay. Um, sadly, he passed away in 94, but he got to live his dream. Uh, yeah. And so, and then the other brother, he plays drums, but his main instrument is guitar, and he lives over in Chattanooga, Tennessee. So I've been on the drum set uh, all my life. First band I can remember being in was a band my middle brother and I had. I was about nine years old. And then from there, I was in my dad's band. Oh, wow. And so... Uh, now, what I do is I, I have a band called the King Creole Orchestra, and we work with tribute artists, um, okay. mainly Elvis. About 90% of our work is with Elvis tribute artists, but yeah. and we travel all over the country. Uh, wow. Matter of fact, I'm, uh, just in July, uh, we were in 17 <laughs> states uh, traveling and uh, went all the way to Seattle. We work with also with uh, Michael Jackson, tribute artist, Cher, tribute artist, and uh, Patsy Cline, tribute artist. Very good. Yeah. And Miss Helene, you're also a drummer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. I wanted to be because my dad was a professional drummer. Oh, really? I traveled all over the South when we were kids, um, much to my mom's displeasure sometimes. But she made it work. <laughs> I understand. But yeah, I grew up in music. Um, and interestingly, my dad played Every performance of the Baton Rouge Little Theater for 27 years. Oh, wow. That and so is I grew up sitting in the orchestra pit watching the shows. Wow. And sitting next to all these fantastic musicians that came from Baton Rouge, New Orleans, everywhere. Well, it's no surprise that y'all are still involved in, you know, it's not music, but, uh, well, it could be music in some ways, sure. some musicals, but uh, still involved in performing. And, and you kind of have that in you, almost in your blood, right? Very good. So, uh, Robert, you mentioned you were the founder of uh, Spotlight Theater Players. How did that come about? Tell me the, tell me the story of how y'all sure. came Yeah, exist. so, um, uh, you know, I, I grew up in French Settlement, and it's not known for having 
you know, any theater. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. that way, you know, Not much theater. We, yeah, we have they have a gifted and talented <laughs> program now. But you know, when I when I grew up there, grew up out there, there was no uh, outlet for the arts. You know, people right. ask me today, did we have a band? In high school, and I said, "Yeah, it was four of us, and we played at the Moonlight Inn." You know, so uh, you didn't have much of a an outlet. But I was so into, I would put on plays for my family. Yeah, and um, uh, when when my wife and I got married, we moved to Denham Springs, and there was an organization in the late late nineties to the early two thousands called DSAC, which. Uh, stood for Denham Springs Area Community Theater, okay. and it was uh, formed by Dinah Toops, which anybody that's involved in any kind of theater in the Livingston Parish area knows who Dinah Toops was. She was the daughter of uh, Dr. Ed Walker, yeah. and so her sister is uh, Barbara, who uh, is or the director of the Livingston Parish Children's Choir. Okay, So Dinah is a phenomenal talent, and I got involved with DSAC, uh, I say I got involved. We actually took my daughter uh, at the time. She was uh, about six or seven years old to audition for Charlotte's Web. We went. They needed someone to play the part of her father, Mr. Arable, and they asked me if I would audition, and I auditioned, and, of course, I already loved theater, but I was 30 at the time and never done anything other than you know, the little goofy plays I put on for my family when I was a kid. Right. And uh, just fell in love with it and got involved in DSAC. Uh, then DSAC, uh, it dissolved. Yeah. And so there was another group that tried to form called Live, and uh, they had a couple of meetings, but nothing came of it. And then we got, my wife and I got involved with the uh, Arts Council here in Livingston Parish. Okay. And I just said, look, I want to bring theater back. To Livingston Parish, and that's pretty much how it, it, it you know, it evolved. What a wonderful! Our thing. first show was Still Magnolias in 2011. Yeah. It's been quite a struggle, I'll tell you that, and we'll get into that, I guess, in yeah. a minute. But uh, I just, you know, wanted to see live theater in Livingston Parish, and so that that's how it started. Wonderful. And Miss Helene, how did you get involved? So there's a a wonderful networking organization i'll give them a plug it's bni yes you heard of yeah it. i've been in it i was in it for probably five years yeah wonderful organization. wonderful organization yeah. um and so in my day job which is a business consultant yeah i was involved in it met some people in livingston parish i live in baton rouge um one of whom is an amazing networker and connector and she said we started talking about hobbies and interests and i said oh you know i like music i like art i'd love to act one day and that's all she had to hear yeah. Because she's a very close friend of Robert's and Charlotte's. Okay. Oh, you need to have lunch with Robert Reynolds. And before we left our lunch, she had me set up with a lunch meeting. Yeah. So I met with Robert. We started talking about our business world. Then we started talking about Spotlight. He told me what was going on, and I said, "Dude, I'm in." Yeah. What do we What do we have to do? This This may be my first chance and my only chance to go ahead and <laughs> audition for a part. I'm not getting any younger. Let's go. Here. <laughs> um, and that was five. Five years ago, maybe? Yeah, or five, see. six years ago? And so since then, um, I mean, I've just been lucky enough that I've auditioned for a few parts and got them, um, started working with the board and trying to help promote because I, I absolutely feel the same way Robert and Charlotte do when it comes to theater being so great yeah. for a lot of reasons. And so I just stuck. Well, you're absolutely an amazing actress. I've actually seen you. Oh, Lord, here uh, we go. Uh, and I'm I'm trying to remember. I, uh, I believe it was Steel Magnolias. Uh, were you in Steel, Ma- Steel Magnolias? Well, yes, yeah, that no, was. And the I was one. Clary Belcher. Yep, yeah, <laughs> I remember. And I was like, that accent is spot on. It was That's so great. Uh, it, it's so much fun. I just can't even tell you. Yeah. Well, you do a wonderful job with it. And let's kind of get into you. Let into kind of struggles with. And look, anytime you're kicking off any business, whether it's a nonprofit or for-profit business, there's obviously going to be struggles, especially when it doesn't really exist or not on a big level, wherever it is you're at. I dealt with it here with the podcast. You know, I was uh, the first in uh, South Louisiana probably to have my own studio. So it was, it was a fight. It was a struggle to get it up and going. Let's talk about that for a second. What are the struggles when you were starting out versus now? The biggest struggle, and in, in obviously the, the, the initial struggle was, okay, you have this dream. How are you going to bring it about? Uh, finding you know people that are that have the same passion that you have. Yeah. You know, I mean, that say, okay, yeah, we need this. Um, because there's been, 
there's been several uh, organizations and they just don't last. Yeah. Um, you know, I talked about DSAC before that. It was the drama room, the, the drama room that was back in the eighties. And then it didn't, ex- you know, it was here for a while and then it's gone. DSAC was here for a while, then it was gone. And then of course live didn't, didn't do anything. Yeah. Um, the, so the first struggle is finding people that, you know, that have the same passion, want to see this take place in this parish, uh, then after that, the biggest struggle is there's not a performing arts center in this parish right. anywhere. So you we don't have we don't have our own facility. So you have to find a facility when you want to put on a performance. So then that limits you far as the type of performance you're going to do. Hundred percent. Yeah. So in the majority of the time, we're we're using a church. Or you know, in the past, it's been uh, a, you know a school, mm-hmm. and you're you're limited on the time that you get the building. You have to adjust your your set building around that. I mean, I build the sets at my house, yeah, and I, I basically build them as a puzzle. Yeah, I build them and put them together in my them? house. Yes, wow, you take got them a little- apart. Handy work, handy yeah. side to you there, <laughs> it is Robert a work Reynolds. Of art too, I can assure you. Yeah, and then you put it in. Uh, the crazy thing about it is uh, the first show we did in 2011 was Steel Magnolias, and every set has – we've used that same set uh, since 2011. Yeah. <laughs> Just Change configured the wallpaper, it. move the window. Yeah. Wow. So, the, so that's the, probably the greatest struggle that we have is location because you're – thank God for holy ground because they're, they're really pleasant to work with. But we get the facility on a Sunday. Yeah. After church, so I have to get in there and put build the set, or you know, I've already ha- basically have it built. It's like a puzzle, but we have to assemble the set on Sunday, and then Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday is will be tech and dress rehearsals. Thursday night's opening night. Wow! So just to put that in perspective of other theaters like Baton Rouge Little Theater, they have months of preparation yeah. for a show, yeah. and then they have. S- you know, multiple weeks that they're on stage before the production. Yeah, we're on we're on the actual stage three nights before production. And that and that's the difference of what funding brings you, right? Yes. And and the Absolutely. benefits of that and facilities. I have been a proponent for many many years of the fact that Livingston Parish absolutely needs a performing arts. Yes. Studio, a a real building that yes. people can go in, not only for what you do, but for uh, bands and things like that. It's, you know, th- the days and times of, of going to see your kids in a gym, it's nice, but it's not good for sound. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I mean, no. you know, it's echoing everywhere. And, and uh, it's something that I would love to see come to fruition, somebody to really get behind that and push it. I can't think of a more worthy organization than uh, you good folks. Yeah. To have a facility like that. And, you know, Baton Rouge, you mentioned uh, their their performing arts building. It, it's a standalone building. And yep. they mm-hmm. and they they have a, a ton of funding because of donations and people who have maybe they they were in it and they left it in their will that, hey, I want to yeah. give like this. Giving. Yes, yeah. yes. And, and those are big things. Uh, but I'm also a prop- proponent of why not Livingston Parish? Yeah, you know why well, can't and we the parish, have that? I mean, the, the, you think of the size of this parish. Yeah. I mean, we, we're what we're the so the top 000? growing parish yeah, in the state the of Louisiana presently. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I travel. Far. I travel all over the country, and I mean, literally, seriously, yeah. literally all over. I mean, uh, East Coast, West Coast, and the majority of the performances that I do in far as music, working with these Elvis guys. Are in towns about the size of Denham Springs. Yeah, and every one of them has a performing arts center. Yeah, and and or if it's not necessarily a, a new performing arts center, they the old theater that was has been built in, yeah. right that was built in the twenties and thirties that was like an old opera house or a, you know a, a movie theater or a vaudeville type. Yeah, it's now the performing arts center, and which is so, wonderful. That's yeah. that's pretty oh, neat and nostalgic. Yeah. You know, I've been in some incredible theaters. We get yeah. pretty geeky on stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. As you yeah. can see, uh, I, in my studio, I have a lot of antique yeah. stuff, yeah. and and that's kind of my, well, my we were, thing. We were in Oklahoma 
back in July and the theater we played at, uh, Will Rogers performed on that oh, stage. Wow. So I was just like, oh, my God, can you, you know, this is amazing to be yeah. on the stage at Icons have been on. Yeah. Um, so anyway, the point of what I'm saying is it's it's time. I mean, we, this, the, this is the fastest growing parish um, and we need it because, you know, even, I mean, not just for our sake, but kind of what you're talking about. You, you have... Uh, graduating classes that are going outside of this parish to have their yeah. ceremonies yeah. because we don't have a facility. Yeah, you know, I agree a hundred percent, Miss Elaine. What about you? What do you think? You know, that's that's where I get all all jazzed up because you know I'm I'm approaching this from a business perspective, mm-hmm. and and when I joined the board, you know, we talked about it. I'm like, guys, we're going to run this like a business because that's the only way we're going to make some headway in right. this happening. Um, but, you know, putting a strategic plan in place, getting our financials in order, mm-hmm. getting people who are interested. We've built up the board. Um, in the last six months, we've increased the people on the board, and we've really got some, some people who are very passionate about making this work involved. So yeah. now we have more hands to do the work. What we need is the community involvement. Yeah. We need the business owners. We need, we need the people who are the foundation of Livingston Parish, who've been here all their lives, who have children and grandchildren now. You know... With all the challenges that we have raising kids and grandkids these days in the community, what better place to keep them or put them and help them learn life lessons than in community theater? I agree. They get to come out of their shell. I was the shyest person on the planet. I could not speak to people. What? Oh, you don't even want to know. It it took me 30 years to finally make the break and try something. And when I did, I'm like, oh, my goodness, if I had known about this, I could have been a different person. Yeah. It's those little things, but the people that support Spotlight that come to every show, and there are hundreds of them. Yeah. We love what y'all do. This is so great for our kids. I want my granddaughter to be in this. We know we've got somebody else we met, a new neighbor. So there's interest there. There's energy and dedication and people willing to work on it from the board and the committee levels and, you know, even our association with Livingston Parish Children's Choir, the things we do in tandem. Yes. Um, I don't sing. They sing. Um, <laughs> but, you know, we've got the interest is there. We've got to find a way to get this to gel. Yeah. And then to get to get the people interested who can make things like this happen. And so those are our governmental leaders. Those are the city people, the council, all of those individuals who can look at this and say, yeah, we see the benefit because there mm-hmm. is benefit there. Oh, there's a huge benefit to it. And it's all the reasons you just listed, especially acting enables people to come out of their shell oh, a little bit. It enables you to really put yourself out there. And I'll use a, just a quick example of how important this type of thing is. Uh, my wife is a very shy person, which is really weird because I'm not. Uh, we are definitely total opposites on that spectrum. But uh, in order to get herself out of her shell, she forced herself to speak at church. That was her thing. I'm going to be. I'm going to read the word at church, and it was frightening to her. But she got up, she did it, and every time she did it, it she became more comfortable with it. Same thing, you know, that would be a perfect form, acting and participating in Spotlight Theater Players, a perfect form of of learning to engage and step outside of your comfort zone, which is so important to young people, but also to older older folks, you know, as well. So take that one step further. In addition to the Christmas show and the plays that we do and the different things like that, you know, our goal is to expand into doing workshops working with kids, working with teenagers. We'd love to have an improv class. We'd love to have people come out and just try it in a safe space and just have some fun. You don't have to be a rock star. You don't have to do it all. Just have some fun. You know, get out there and let yourself enjoy life a little bit. Yeah. We can't do that if we're hopping around trying to find a spot. That's right. I mean, we had, we had for the Elvis show, we rehearsed Seven different places in six weeks. One of which wow. being my den- my living room. Oh, there you go. We cleared yeah. out all the furniture and built the set halfway. So you know, it was a thing. <laughs> Thank you, my That's husband. That's wonderful. Yes. And, yeah. and the key in what she you know she said is it's community theater. So that means anyone, anyone, if anyone is and and you don't have to. You have, don't have to be Hamlet. You don't have to be Hamlet. Okay. You know, you got you people that you know for the first time never been on a stage before, they get the opportunity. You yeah. come and audition, and if you you know, you, you 
who knows, you may find a diamond in the rough. You know? That's right. Sometimes it's the last thing you expect. Yeah. I, I have a particular person here who incidentally is actually active in uh, the children's choir, her, her kids. Yeah. But she sat down behind a microphone to do a podcast, and I'm telling you she's as good as anybody in the yeah. world. And I'm sitting there thinking, right here in Livingston Parish, huh? Yeah. And I had to talk her in to doing it. I could just tell from her personality. <laughs> that should be great. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it, it does happen, and, and lightning does strike in those instances. Now, what are the what have been the hurdles? What what you know? My next question to that, and probably what a lot of people are thinking, is, well, why don't we have one then? Why? What? What's the hurdles to a performing arts center? Hmm. You know, the I guess. Money and money is the number, <laughs> you know no you, you, that's the biggest hurdle. Yeah. Um, there is an awareness. Uh, I'll say that uh, I'm I'm on the uh, Livingston Parish Tourism Board, yeah, and so it's it's brought up, uh, you know, periodically. Yeah, so we know uh, that it's something that ha- it needs to take place, um, and on the on the government level too. There there's an awareness. All those entities have got to be brought together. I would right. would say so. Yeah, that's you know that's what I would think. That's that's a hurdle, and, and not that they they're fighting each other. It's just you got to get everybody in the same room and get well, on the same page. Right, and they and, have uh, to see it as a priority. A priority, and and I I certainly feel it is. I, everybody in this room right now feels it is, and there's a lot of people out there that I'm sure feel sure. that it's something needed, um, but recognizing it's needed and yeah. then performing the action to get it are, are different. And so more to me, more people need to take that extra step and yeah. say, okay, yes, we need it. Now we need to, to perform an action to make it happen, make, make it happen. And also when they, you know, when this, it's funny, I don't know if you knew Miss Regina Walker, Yes, but Miss Regina used to talk to me about this all the time, that we need this, and she would tell me all the time, and you're going to be the one to drive the bus to get us there. And and I'm like, okay, how? I'm, you know, I mean, I, but what when this happens and we get the collective group together, then there needs, then there needs to be people on that committee, that board, or whatever it's going to be, that has theater experience because what we don't need is we don't need a building that's just has a stage and that it's not conducive to it needs to be conducive not only to if we're having a band play there but or you know the lp the living parish children's choir uh, or a dance recital but it's also got to be conducive to theater because there's 100 percent zachary high school has one of the it has a phenomenal theater and I was filming it and s- sending pictures to uh, Buddy Mincy at the t- when, oh you know, there you go <laughs> I sent them to Buddy and like man watch this Buddy this is what we this need this is what I'm talking about this yeah. is yeah. what I'm talking about we don't need just another venue with a stage right and um, because you know it should then it's just a venue where a band can set up and play yeah. You know, it, it has to be conducive to all of the arts. Absolutely, and, and, uh, and that can be done. There yeah. are there are buildings that are designed that yep. way. Whether it's a band or a choir or uh, you know plays being performed there, yep. it fits every every aspect of that. So we say hurdles. The biggest one, money, obviously, but uh, but bringing all the people together that can make this happen. Yeah, and, um, and you know that's that's going to have to be. I mean, you got to have community involvement, but it's going to have to be the government. I mean, you know, you're going to have to have government involvement, you know, whether the parish president's mm-hmm. office, yeah. um, and, of course, tourism. I know they they are going to be involved in bringing this about. Yeah. Um, I, and I would um, imagine there are there's got to be somewhere some grants. Yes. For this mm-hmm. stuff, and but look, grants are no easy thing to find. They're no easy thing to write. They're 100%. they're difficult. Yeah. Um, but you know, maybe there's a match there somewhere yeah. where, uh, you can start out with a figure and, and, but it takes passion. It takes yeah. everybody wanting to see this happen. All citizens, the entire community, you know, if every, all of us have representatives at the council, whoever your council member is, give them a call. Say, why don't we have a, you know, performing arts studio yeah. in this area? 
watch the podcast. Tell them to watch the podcast. Absolutely. But it takes approaching these people from a from a government perspective and saying, "Hey, this is you know something we want to see you accomplish, and we want to see it for our parish." Well, you know one one thing that comes to my mind is you know Scott Ennis is bringing his concerts to North Park, mm-hmm. but you know we were losing him to Ascension Parish, right? right. Because he was doing them at um, the Lamar, yeah. You know, and Lamar is not necessarily a, a performing arts area, but it it is a area. You know, it is a, a facility, sure. it's a venue, yeah. And um, so you you think about you know what he brings. As far as the concerts, you know, I mean, what was the one he had here last summer? Was it fifteen, twenty thousand? 20,000 people? Yeah. You know, Cajun Country of, Jam. Yeah, I you, think know, you it got was. a lot of people showing up. Sure. Just think if you had a, a, a facility that could, could handle that, you know. I agree. And, um, Dreams come true. You know, I mean, God bless him. He's doing it outside. And, and outdoor concerts are amazing. But, man, when it's 98 degrees and 100% humidity. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> I'll catch the replay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Ask everybody from the game last weekend. They can tell you. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I was there. But you know, one thing about what you guys were talking about. So, over the years, Spotlight's made attempts. Yes. And talked to a lot of people. And Robert knows so many people in Charlotte, and they're just so well ingrained in Livingston Parish. And that's been going on, but it's been going on in pockets. Yeah. Right. And so now that we have more hands involved and. We've expanded the pool of volunteers and board members and interest. And so now we're starting to formulate our strategy of all of these individuals that we need to get them interested enough to have a conversation in a room. Now we have the people to pull that together. Yeah. And so now we've got a vision that we can actually try to share with everyone and say, yes, we've been doing things in pieces and parts up to now. But now we've got a strategy. Now yeah. we've got a plan. Yeah. Now we know exactly what we're going after, when we want to get it, and why. Yeah. And let us tell you about that. So I think the challenge for us now is to actually start getting people to listen. Yeah. You know, yeah. South Louisiana, we love to go to the ballpark. We love to watch baseball. We love to watch football. Not so much maybe community theater. Yeah. But there's a lot of people sitting in the ballpark stands that don't play sports. But they have a child or a grandchild or a daughter or a spouse who's interested Same holds true for theater, music, arts, performance, fun shows, activities, workshops. There's something there for everybody. And imagine what it can lead to. I mean, some of these that start early, they might end up they might end up with an Oscar one day. And it all started look at the the spotlight that has come out of Livingston Parish in the last couple of years. Yeah, Um, it's here. And I can tell you firsthand um, the quality of the people in Livingston Parish working with them and interacting with the group is absolutely phenomenal. 100%. I mean, there are some wonderful people in this parish and, and I've been really blessed and fortunate to meet a lot of them. Yeah. Um, we've just got to get, we have to make everybody aware of what we're trying to do and why, you know, that aha moment. It's like, Oh, that's what y'all are doing. Yeah. Right. That's where we are right now. Building that. Yes. And you know, I couldn't look, I couldn't think of anything more beautiful than the all-star uh, performing Arts Center. There you go. <laughs> Matt McKay. <laughs> right? I mean, and that's the thing. Look, uh, these companies out there that have a little bit of extra money, you could be the Raising Cane Center yeah. of Livingston right. Parish, right? I, I feel like Alfalfa sometimes on Little Rascals <laughs> when he says, come on, people, we need your money. We've got to build a clubhouse, you know? Well, it's... And we are not proud. <laughs> we will use that line. Yeah. It is, it is certainly... One of the most needed things, yeah. if not the most needed thing in the community. Yeah. And I want to ask Miss Elaine something real quick. Oh, uh, what would you say the benefits to the community are of having a por- performing arts center? So we've talked a little bit about what it does for the people of the community, the kids, the children, yes. and the families. But you know, if you think of the bigger picture and get to the 30,000-foot view a minute, You start having performances of any type, whether it's music, whether it's the arts, what have you, and you start drawing people into Livingston Parish. Yeah. You start adding to the financial success of the parish, tax dollars, sales dollars. Now, all of a sudden, maybe we need more hotels because we've got people coming in because you've got a great show coming on. I mean, it can add so much to the economy of Livingston Parish that cannot be overlooked. 100%. But it's got to be done right. If we just go find somebody's empty warehouse and try to do it, it's not going to work. It'll be fun, 
we'll do it. We'll do our thing. But we're not going to draw crowds of three and 400 people a night that we need to actually make it work. Yeah. Right. So the economic benefit to the parish, um, elevating Livingston Parish's reputation across the South. Every parish could use that. Sure. No matter who you are. As a place where people come to have fun and do these things. Those of us on the, the board and, and involved in, in uh, Spotlight Theater, we go all over watching shows. We go to Bay St. Louis. We go to Ponchatoula. We go to Ascension. We go to Central. They have performing art venues. Yeah. We don't. We have my living room, uh, and we have a couple yeah, of Yeah, your places. living room. That's right. And everybody we have holy ground everybody to Helene's tonight. <laughs> but, you know, the, the economic benefit I don't think should be overlooked. It's not yeah. just a dream we have as a private citizen. It's 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 something for the community. Absolutely. And when they're here, they're going to eat here, right? Yeah. They're going to shop here. Absolutely. They're going uh, to – it's really endless, the advantage from that end of Big of opportunities things. there. I, I agree 100%. It, now, let me ask you something, Robert. You're a Primerica guy. That's what you do in your day job. Yeah. This is a lot of work. This is a lot of work, Robert. Why do you do it? Why Outside do it? of, you know, sure. uh, the beginning, what we talked about. Well, you know, I mean, obviously, I love it. Um, and and I, I do. I love acting, although I haven't done a lot of it here lately because I'm doing most of the behind the scenes work. Um but uh, I'm actually going to be in. I will be acting in the spring play, so I'm excited about that. Um, <laughs> but I do it, you know, not only because I love it, but I do want to see. I mean, my family has been in this parish since 1838. Yeah. So the the roots go deep, you know. Mayor and, Polly. Uh, oh, Mayor Polly, <laughs> kin to everybody out there, you know. Yeah. So when we when we moved out there when I was a kid, because originally we lived in Baton Rouge, but I couldn't marry anybody. <laughs> up there because I was kidding everybody. Um, so I had to go to Marpaul to find a wife. <laughs> right. um, anyway, but I want to. I want to see the parish. We've come a long way as a parish. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Livingston's been the butt of a lot of jokes, okay? And we know that. Sure. But now we're kind of the envy of how, I mean, our school system is, is phenomenal. Um, the parish is, is just moving forward. For, forward in so many uh, directions, you know, great things that's happening in this parish. Yeah. And um, I want I, I personally want to see us move forward in the arts because it is something that has, in, in my opinion, has been neglected in the parish. Yeah. So I have a love for it, obviously, but I also want to see, I want to see it move forward in this parish. And then, you, you know, hopefully when I'm in the dirt, that uh, there is a performing arts center here, and it's going to be thriving, and it's going to be, you know, the parish is going to be known for a place that the arts, you can go there, and, you know, your your kids can thrive in the arts, or anyone yeah. can thrive. Amen. Amen to oh, that. So and Miss Elaine, uh, let me ask you, what do, what can the community do to help at this point? What what would you recommend people do? Everybody's heard this. Yeah. And every, you know, let's let's say everybody wants to get involved and how can we help and what do we need to do? What would you recommend? So, you know, there's a number of avenues for that. Um, Robert talked about the fact that we can't do anything without money to do things. Yeah. It costs money to buy scripts. Sure. To pay royalty rights on these things. Yeah. Um, it costs money to build sets. We get donations. We get things in kind. And that's great. But, you know, we have to have a cash flow in order to plan for the next thing and the next thing. So donations... 100% huge. Um, that's going to help us move forward. Sometimes in the beginning of an organization really kind of making their first push, people are hesitant to donate because they don't mm. know what they're going to get back. Yeah. And they don't really, are you guys going to make it? How's this going to work? Um, we'd love to talk to you and let you know exactly what we need and why and what our plans are and let you feel some of our energy and passion. And I can promise you, you'll be writing a check. We can do that. Absolutely. Um, but the donations. But then also just... Do you have any interest in helping? Yeah. You know, when we do a show right now, um, depending on where we are in the show type, we may have concessions. We might need people to help with that. We need people to take tickets at the door. We need people to help seat. We need stage hands and set builders, goodness knows. So there's a whole lot of things. If somebody's just like, I may not have a lot of money. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not going to act, but kind of sort of want to do something. Yeah. 
Um, you want to get involved. I invited a friend of mine to come. She, she and some friends of mine have come to every show I've been in for the last four years. And at the last one, she's like, okay, I'm ready to be your stage manager now. I want to do something. Mm. Knocked me over. Yeah. Um, but it was great because she saw it and she felt it. Love that. So donations, get on a committee. We're not to where we meet every 20 minutes. Um, yeah. We have a plan. Get on a committee and volunteer to do something. Help out at a show. See what you think. Yeah. We'll talk about, I'm sure, some of the events coming up. Yep. Um, when we are at the festivals, the Denim Springs Fall Fest and those things, that's our that's our fundraisers. So yeah. we'll have a bake sale. Come by, throw a couple of bucks in the pot, and go away with some brownies. Everybody needs them. Yeah. Robert, you baking support. brownies? Absolutely. Uh, Charlotte does that. <laughs> you don't want me baking them. They'll probably be bricks. If I do. Right. She's amazing at it, too, by the way. <laughs> Well, very good. Help. You know, just what do you, what can you do to help? And do you do you understand what we're trying to do? Does it resonate with you at all? Yeah. And then help us. Help Love us get it. the word out. Help us meet people. I need some warm introductions yeah. to people of means. Yeah. We can get this ball rolling. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Um, I couldn't agree more. And Robert, you know, Miss Lane brought it up, but let's talk about uh upcoming productions. Sure. Any, anything upcoming? Yeah. So uh on October 25th, we'll, we will be performing War of the Worlds radio oh. as a radio play. Yeah. So what 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 is a radio play? Well, you know, back in the 30s and 40s, even up in into the 60s, uh, you know, radio was the medium. Yeah. And you, know, you didn't have a television. Now you get to go to the movies. But when you're sitting at your home on a Wednesday night, you, you turn your radio on, and you would have dramas or comedies. And so what a radio and how those worked is in the studio you would have actors and actresses holding a script and they would read from the script and and you know use their voices act to act the show. Yeah, act the show and then you had a what's called a foley artist doing all the sound effects. So we'll be at La Chien on October 25th and we'll all be up be on stage and we will be in period garb. Yeah. So uh, you know dressed like the 1940s. And we'll have someone doing sound effects, and we're going to do War of the Worlds, the 1938 broadcast, uh, which was the Mercury Theater with Orson Welles, yeah. which actually sent people into a frenzy because oh, they yeah. thought that <laughs> they thought we were actually, actually being, being invaded, invaded by yeah. aliens. Yeah. So yes, I don't think that'll happen. So that's coming up next. Um, after that, December 7th, we will have what's called our Rock and Christmas Review. Yeah, uh, it's basically it's basically just. It, it's music. It'll be you know Christmas music, uh, but it'll be with a, a six piece horn section, and, um, and you know just vocalists from around the area. The goal that the big plan that I had was a Dean Martin type Christmas show, but I just couldn't get the people uh, in time to do it because uh, a lot of the actors and singers and actresses that we use they're involved in church. Churches sure. are having their musicals going on, so. Um, Anyway, I'm going to do a little bit better planning for next year, and we will have the Dean Martin show next year, I promise. Uh, in, in And that show is going to be at Serenity. At Serenity, yeah. The yeah. Serenity Event Center yeah. out in uh, between. Live Oak area. Yeah, Live Oak yeah. area. Beautiful facility. Absolutely. Um, anyway, uh, after that, the next show will be in the end of March. I don't have those particular dates, but uh, it's uh, um, Peril on the Mississippi, right? I think I think that's the name of it. Uh, Shauna Fahad will be directing, okay. and it's a it's a, a kind of a comedy mystery show uh, on, on a riverboat on the Mississippi River. So it's really funny. Going to be a really funny show. Yeah. So that's what's coming up. You know, currently near, near future. Yeah. yeah, near future. Our, our goal was to to do four major productions a year. Yeah. And, uh, but because of limitations right now. We, we just can't do that. One thing about the Livingston Parish community, there's several nonprofits in the area that are, yeah. that are supported and uh spotlight theater. There is as deserving as any other nonprofit for all the reasons that we've talked about today. You brought it up uh, the way it shapes your, your kids. Yeah. And then even some adults that are out there that want to overcome maybe some anxiety with, Absolutely performing in front of an audience, yeah. things like that, or maybe the the next Brad Pitt is out there yeah. somewhere. <laughs> you know? Uh you never know what can uh what you have right here in your community, but it, it look, y'all, it takes 
It takes money. Yeah. It, it takes does. money. Money makes the world go around, right. as they as they say. You know, we are a, a tax exempt nonprofit. Service, yeah. So uh, we have that going for us. So we, yeah, we can save some tax dollars for you. Anybody, that's right. Anybody wants to write a check yeah. for six or seven digits, we can we can. We help. Yeah, clubhouse. that's right. <laughs> we tax. Build a clubhouse. <laughs> there you go. Let's talk about Facebook for a second. Uh, I know that you have a social media manager kind of handles your Facebook page yes. and all that. But how do people go about? following you on Facebook. Social Perfect timing because in the last couple of weeks with our additions to the board, we yeah. now have a marketing and communications person. We have a social media person, all of whom they have just been ridiculously amazing. They're invaluable. Um, you know, our, our website. Uh, so we had used an acronym previously and you can still get there using the old one, but the, the website is spotlight theater players.org. Okay. All lowercase one word, literally. Yeah. Um, You'll be able to reach us at info at spotlighttheaterplayers.org for yeah. email addresses. But the website uh, will have our Instagram and TikTok rolling before long. And so as we start doing our fundraisers and events, even some of our, our workshops and training in between and rehearsals, we're going to start promoting that on social media so we can get the word out. So when you guys go to Facebook and hit up SpotlightTheaterPlayers.org and Spotlight Theater Players on Facebook, like it and share it, please. We've got to get the word out. That's yep. the way to start it. Absolutely. And I will link the Facebook and the website and all that in the description of this podcast. So if you're driving or something right now and, uh, you know, don't. Don't write it down while you're driving. Uh, I'm going to link it in the description. Just go to that, click on it, and it'll bring you right to all that stuff. And what we're going to have yes. on our website as well, Jim, is we're going to build out um, a page for people who are interested. Yes. You know, I'm interested. I can sing. I can dance. I want to act. I don't know what I want to do. I just want to talk to somebody. Yeah, I just want to yeah. be It's not going to be a high-pressure sales pitch, I can tell you. <laughs> it's all about, hey, this is what we do. What do you think you want to do? So That's if you wonderful. have interest and you really just want to ask us some questions, yeah. when you get out there, when you get to the website, find the info page, send us a message. Um, in the past, we've not been great about responding to people because we had few hands. Sure. But we're getting better at it. I am just excited to be able to sit down with you and promote. Uh, and one thing I really want to hammer down today is very important organization. We have so many wonderful things here in Livingston Parish. We have a beautiful antique district right here in Denham Springs where we record out of. Uh, and nothing fits better than that, than spotlight theater players with that antique district yeah. and, and all the things we got going on around here. Uh, but it's time for us to all, as a community, start acting and, you know, quit talking, I guess you could say. And that's not in a, a harsh way. Yeah. That's yeah. that's all of us. Momentum, you know? Yeah, I would question anybody that challenged whether this was needed. Everybody agrees that it's needed, yeah. but we need some actors. We need, and I don't, you know, actors for Spotlight, too. But we need some <laughs> act, people that are going to take action on this and figure out what it takes how to get there, and then follow through with it. Yeah. I That's mean, you, the difference. You, you made me think of, you know, Walt Disney would, would dream something, and then he would tell his brother Roy, and Roy yeah. said, how, how's that going to happen? He says, it's not my job to make it. He goes, I've dreamed it. You go find the money. <laughs> <Yeah>. you know. <laughs> that's right. So that's we, that we, need, we need a Roy Disney that's well, going to say, okay, this is the, you know, the money and the act. The, the, this is the engine that's going to propel this thing forward. I think they yeah. call that delegating. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. But, you know, I, I would go so far as to throw out a challenge. Right? Yeah. We need a building. Yeah. We need a place that we can commit to and have someone commit to let us use for a year to say, you know what, let's figure it out, rehearse there, see if it's good for to perform in, what have you, because the cost associated with that is you know, substantial. Sure. Um, we need a place to start from, yeah. to start to, to store our props, to store our materials, to have the rehearsals, to do the brainstorming. There's a lot of vacant buildings out there, yeah. a lot. Yeah. So maybe somebody's got something that they could say, hey, y'all come take a look. Let's see yeah. if we can work something out. Love and, that. And with that, you know, um, I know I'm kind of touching on something I talked about earlier, but as I travel the country with these tribute acts, these theaters I go to, they have tribute acts coming in there every every weekend. 
sure. you know, whether it's Eagles Tribute Act or you know Elvis, which is real popular. But one of the things we've talked about is we get a facility, then we can when we're not doing a show there, you could bring these tribute acts in. Yeah, they're to, always to perform. looking for a spot. They're, they're, yeah, they're looking for a place, you know. Yeah. And there's some phenomenal tribute acts out there, you know. Thank you both for coming on. Any final thoughts? Anything else you want to mention before we get out? We need to build a clubhouse. We need to build a clubhouse. <laughs> build a clubhouse. Give us a call. Get in touch with us. We'd yes. love to talk to anybody that just wants to know more. Yeah. We'll take it from there. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you, brother. Thank first. you. Thank so you. Much. I, I yeah. enjoyed it. And, I, again, I, I can't think of a more worthy organization than you guys to and i'm right there with you very passionate about uh getting a facility for you guys and some other organizations around here that that is really needed so thank well, I, you know if we can do a, just a quick thank you yes to, robert touched on it but all of the people that have been involved in the board previously and involved with spotlight and all yeah. of those local companies and organizations and the churches that have allowed us yep. to use that for their facilities we couldn't have gotten this yep. far without them right so a huge thank you to everybody yeah. in the community that's done what they've done already we couldn't have gotten this far right. very good very good and a huge thank you to all you listeners for listening and uh taking an interest in local leaders the podcast we're coming up on one million downloads on nice. youtube we are right around the corner from it and that is only because of uh, people like you guys that come on the show they hear me talk every week you know they, <laughs> they're probably sick of me by now but uh but really love and appreciate every single one of you who share the show are passionate about local businesses local nonprofits, and the like and until next time i'm jim chapman reminding you love your community support local business and keep leading thank you very much Thank you.